Let's get serious. Are you tired of catching gaff top, especially from up here? Is that maybe all you catch right now, is gaff top? Well, does your setup look a little something like this? And let me ask you, are you only using dead shrimp? If you are, for, that could probably be the problem. What's up, fishing fam? Welcome back to John Joe's Fishing. And today, I'm gonna be teaching you how to catch giant fish from the pier. Okay, so now learning to catch more fish from the pier, I'm gonna teach you four easy steps, so simple. And the very, very first step is gonna be your bait and your rig. What type of rig are you using now? The rig that me and Jocelyn always use and what seems to just consistently catch us fish is a fish finder rig. The only thing is with our fish finder rig, we make them ourselves. So we don't just go and buy the wire leader with the weight that's already built to me i it's just personally i've never really liked them i've always believed that fish can kind of can see really well underwater so they can see that wire instead what our rig is and our setup that we do we go and we buy a swivel and we attach one end of the main line and that same main line we stick an egg weight on it so we stick the egg weight on the main line and then we go from the main line to the swivel. And then from the swivel, it kind of blocks it. And it, it's able to slide as far up and down that it needs to on the main line. And from there, we go typically about like 20 pound uh, fluorocarbon. I, find, I found that fluorocarbon is the best to use because you can't really see it in the water. And the next thing that we use is something that we call um a circle hook so if you're a beginner or if you've been fishing for a while i'm pretty sure you, everybody knows what the circle hook is well the ones that we use are from mustad and they're the demon circle um three aught i believe that's the exact ones that we use and we've caught big fish we've caught small fish it, it, all fishes of all kind literally like these hooks work and they work super well, they're super sharp, so you'll have to be super, super careful. But that's the rig that we use. Even catching giants, what we've used is live shrimp. I found that live shrimp works the best in just about all occasions. So you can basically catch any type of species that you want off of just live shrimp. And make sure you get an aerator, make sure you keep them real lively. And I, I've always found that this is the best way to do it using this rig, using this setup, and also using live shrimp. When you combine these two together, it's crazy what you can catch off of them. And the second super easy step, this one kind of takes a little bit more time to develop, but once you know what you're looking for, you can more or less see exactly how it works. But the second step is to read the water and focus on structure. So what a lot of people don't know when they fish from the pier is they sit there and they cast as far as they can possibly cast. And unless you know there's like a nice honey hole or there's a lot of fish maybe in that area where you're casting, then that's completely fine. But most of the time, the fish, they're right beneath you. You know, a lot of people don't know that. And that's how we catch so many giants. They sit and they feed in there. Okay, and if he's gonna run, when they're right run. underneath, they feel safer. They he's feel tired. more protected because can of the pilings and all the sand the that's pylon? mixed and mushed up in there. You got your water current flowing through. Uh, a lot of the bait fish, they try to just run up under there because there's so much structure. A lot of your crustaceans, they stay right around those pilings. And that's how we've always been so successful with this, is literally just letting the line drop okay, straight run, down run, to the but bottom. You're doing good. You're doing great. We, we don't even have to go. cast as far as we can. And it makes it so don't much easier because you're on. also not having hey, to worry about getting run. tangled Perfect. with the person next to you. Because I know sometimes people come up on the pier and they want to just butt up right next to you. And it's crazy to me, but this it, it works. And here, I'm going to teach you how to read the water right about now. So first thing to know when, when reading the water is something we call swash. Basically what that is, is a turbulent layer of water that washes up on the beach after an incoming wave has broken. 
Or in smaller words, it's this white stuff that turns out on the beach. So all this right here is wash. All of this is wash. And basically what happens is when the waves go over a shallower part of sand, they they break and they turn into this white stuff. That's why you always see a lot more wash over here in this area. Because right here it's nothing but sand. The reason wash is so important is because you can see what the bottom of the ocean looks like just by looking at the breaks of the waves. The second part is called the trough. So it's basically in between two sandbars. So we have a sandbar here and a sandbar here. And the reason we know our sandbars are there is because of the waves breaking, is because of the swash that's right on top. You can see them, you can see the sandbars running all the way from here. And then it looks like there's a small cut and then it picks up back here. And then you can see another sandbar here, another cut right here, and then another sandbar. And so you can see where all of those areas of sandbar are at. And the trough, what the trough is basically, a trough is a long, wide, and deep depression in the ocean floor having gently sloping sides. So those sloping sides is this right here. Is basically all this right here. Those sloping sides are basically your sandbars right here. And it almost, if you think about it, kind of like a trench. It makes like a trench. So right here on the inside, all of this right here is all the deep part. This can go anywhere, range from 3 to 5 to 8 to 10 feet, just depending on how far you are. The reason the trough is so important is because this, since it's so deep, it acts as a highway for fish. All of this acts as a highway. And that's this is the route that fish will take to travel and go back and forth. And the third, but not the final step, I'm going to teach you how game fish think when they're in the water. But more importantly, I'm going to teach you um, how they feed. So there's a, there's a way to kind of know. Um, inside of the water, the, where the trough is, there's sand that kind of comes up. So what the game fish like to do, which when I say game fish, I'm talking about your reds, your flounder, your trout. Um, maybe not flounder as much, but for sure reds and trout. What they like to do is literally pin that bait up against the wall. You know what I mean? So it, So if you have like... You have your sand structure from your sandbar, and it's up here. What the game fish will do is they'll sit and they'll wait for an ambush. And as soon as they see some, as soon as they see a mullet or they see a crustacean or something, they'll pin it up against the side. And that's how they feed. They'll sit there, they'll grab it, and then they'll take off and they'll eat. You know, the the same works for sheephead. If you're trying to fish for sheephead, the best thing to do is fish right around those pilings because a lot of your crustaceans they sit around there. When I say crustaceans, I'm talking about like some of your shrimp. So if, you, if you're using shrimp as bait, your best bet is to literally go right by those pilings and just drop your bait straight down. And those fish, they'll, they'll just pin it straight up against. It's almost like candy for them. It's just so easy for them to get. They can't pass it up. And the fourth and last step is finding the right water depth. I can't, I can't stress enough how important all of these are but especially this one it's super important because the fish can easily miss your bait you know if if it's not in the right water depth the fish can either swim right under it or swim right over it so a lot of people like when you're fishing from a pier they'll sit and they'll throw it out as far as they can and then what happens is your bait just kind of flows and sits and stays at the bottom so remember how i was kind of telling you earlier about how fish feed so whenever they come, they'll, they'll sometimes they'll even pin it up against the ground or they'll just come swallow it whole. If you've ever seen a video, you'll see them do that every now and then. But um, when you're finding the right water debt, a lot of times when the fish are in the trough, they're using that trough for a highway. 
So sometimes they're just cruising straight through the middle. Sometimes they're cruising down at the bottom. Sometimes they're cruising on top. But it's up to you to be able to find that water debt in which they're biting or in which they're going through. And once you find that, oh man, you're going to be hooking them like crazy, like crazy. You're going to keep going. You're going to keep getting them. You're going to be super excited. And everybody's going to be looking at you like, man, wow, how did you do it? And the reason that I know is because when we were at Corpus Christi and we were at Keeper's Pier, that's exactly what happened to us, especially Jocelyn. She was just, she was so bored. She left it on the bottom for God knows how long. And she found out by accident. I kind of already knew, but she found out by accident. She just left the bait sitting there and she was getting bored. So what she did is she would reel it up and it's just suspended in the middle of the water. And she would just sit there and, and play with the rod and play with it. And next thing you know, whap, it just, it, she just starts ripping drag because a big red just came in and, and snagged it from her without her even realizing about the water debt. We were fishing in probably about 10 feet worth of water because it was a high tide. And man, she kept it up like right in the center. So she was about five feet off of the bottom and that red just came and snagged it. It, it was awesome. But that's, that's why it's so important for water debt. You know, you don't want your fish to swim either right under or right over your bait because then they'll never be able to see it. Well, if you're still watching, I really hope that you got great, great value out of this. And I hope you take some of these tips into consideration. You go out there and you catch more fish because that's what I'm here for. That's what Joe's here for. That's what we're all here for is to get you to get out and catch, catch fish. That's the only way that it's fun. If you're a dad, go and take your family out. If you're a mom, go and take your family out. If you're an older brother like I am and you just want to teach your younger siblings, hey, let's go out and let's enjoy nature. Well, that's what we're here for. Have fun. Catch you on the next one.